All right, here we go. If you're trying to play a mage in Morrowind, let's be honest with ourselves, it's probably because you saw a clip like this. But if you're anything like me, or you know, pretty much every other Marwood player on their first attempt, it probably went something more along the lines of this. If that looks like something familiar to you, then fear not, because the whole point of this video today is to set you up to go from Sideshow Bob down to the elementary school craft show to Chris Angel uh, floating above the Luxor. Yeah, that shit was, that shit was pretty cool when I was a little kid. You know, I had the first three seasons of his show on DVD. Anyways, sit back, put your thinking caps on, and let's hop right into the run. Let's see what we can do. Chris Angel, and, uh, David Blaine. There you go. Can't think of any other famous magicians, but we're coming for you. What's your name? Oh, oh, that one guy uh, who made the rounds on YouTube who does the, does the card tricks. You've heard the phrase, the oldest trick in the book? This is not it. Two. Yeah, he's really that guy. That guy's pretty fucking cool. Um, name, uh, Chris Angle. It's like Chris Angel mixed with Kurt Angle. WWE SmackDown in '64. Have you played it? You know. Here comes the guy. You played it. You know. This is where you get off. So first things first. In character creation, we gotta pick the race that we want. There's really only two uh, that are viable and geared towards being a major or magica based character right off the bat. This is going to be our high elf and our Breton. So first thing to mention with the High Elf is that we get a 150% boost to our Magical Pool. This sets High Elves up to be great like Spell Slingers. They have this really big Magical Pool so you can just throw stuff out and just light everything on fire and shock everybody and you know, it's it's hunky-dory. It's awesome, you're like a wizard from D&D. But, just like a wizard in D&D, you're gonna have a super low threshold for damage. They have a 50% weakness to Magicka, 50% to Fire, 25 to Frost, 25 to Shock. They do get a buff to resist disease of 75%, but that's not honestly that big of a deal. Cure disease potions are pretty common in the game. The other option, the safer option, if you're a new player, highly recommend you look into this one, and that is the Breton. So like our High Elf, the Breton also gets a boost to their magical pool. There is only a 50%, but that's still a great amount of magicka to start with. They also have a 50% resistance to magicka off the bat, so kind of the opposite of our High Elf. And then they also get a 50 point shield daily from their dragon skin ability now i forgot to mention this on the high elf but let's look at the skill bonuses as you can see we have alteration conjuration destruction illusion enchant so a little bit more of a of an offensive focus whereas when we talk about the breton they get boosts to mysticism restoration illusion conjuration and alteration so more support based defensive base abilities. So in summary, if you're a new player, I recommend the Breton. Uh, if you wanna be a glass cannon, not really worried about any of the weaknesses, then go with the High Elf. I personally usually go Breton if I'm playing the Mage, just a little more consistent in the fights. So I'm gonna go with that right here. And then we'll leave the appearance, you know, looking solid here, looking like old Friar Tuck or something. Like the, the you know, the genetics guy who discovered the peas. Like the, this guy, this guy's out, you know, fondling leaves in the garden. Great, I'm sure you'll fit right in. <laughs> Follow me up to the office and they'll finish your release. Final and leaves in the garden. Great. That's, yeah, you, all the other brothers are probably like, what is that guy doing? Ah, uh, history. History's fun. Open a book once in a while. There's a lot of there's a lot of weird shit in there. Ah, uh, yes. A lot of weird shit. Expecting you. Now we come into the second part of character creation that's crucial to being a good mage, and that's gonna be a custom class. 90% of the power is derived from the name you pick, so you gotta get something good. Pick into the freaking uh, theme here. I'm gonna go with with Mind Freak Er. Right, it's got to be a title. But honestly, this is probably one of the easiest parts of the build. You want to click your specialization as Magic. Come over to Favorite Attributes. Choose Intelligence and Willpower. It's just gonna give you a little boost to those stats. And these are our primary um, stats that will impact our spell casting abilities and and chance, as well as our Magical Pool. And then for your major skills, you're gonna wanna focus on whatever kind of mage you wanna be best. So if you wanna be a conjurer, take conjuration as major. If you wanna be 
uh, like a spell slinger, pick destruction. If you want to impact the world around you, raise people's dispositions, raise your own skills, pick things like alteration or mysticism or illusion. I usually go with a pretty standard smattering. I like to be a, I, I usually play like a glass cannon kind of style. So I'll go destruction, conjuration for some support, alteration to help me with getting through locked doors, and then restoration for healing, of course, really crucial. You're also probably going to want to pick whatever armor skill you want to use as your major skill to assist you with leveling. Make sure you level effectively. You don't turn into some, you know, little weak little daisy out in the field getting roughed up by all these strange orzimers and crap that you find in the find in the caves. <laughs> so, um, I usually go with unarmored when I'm playing a mage just for flavor reasons. But pick your fancy here. For minor skills, highly recommend you take one weapon skill so whatever weapon that would be spears great because it has a long reach so you don't have to be up in someone's grill if you run out of magicka short blades also a great option and i will actually be using a short blade as part of this run so i'm going to pick short blade here it's also important to remember to pick whatever magic schools you didn't put in your major skills into your minor skills so i'm doing mysticism and illusion and then also put in some support skills i like alchemy and enchant so boom there you have it you can of course add little tweaks here and there to make sure that you end up with the play style you want if you want to be a spell blade or you know some kind of like sneaky mage assassin guy or uh, whatever fits your fancy just go ahead and be crazy with it that's all the there is to proceeded. it you mentioned you were born under a certain sign so now with our custom class out of the way we come to really the final gate in character creation and that is the birth signs and there's really only three options that are specifically tilted towards being a mage so we'll talk through those now the first the mage um, not really going to spend a lot of time here. It's pretty self-explanatory, just a 50% boost. This is the safest option, and it's good on any class. The second option here is the Apprentice, and this is honestly kind of like the High Elf embodied because you do get that 150% boost to your Magicka pool, but you also get the weakness to Magicka of 50%. So remember, if you're starting the High Elf, and you take this birth sign, you have a 100% weakness to Magicka right off the bat. So you're gonna be really, really poor in fights with other Magic users. So just keep that in mind. Now, my favorite application for the Apprentice is actually what I use on pretty much any time I play a Breton because Breton gets the 50% resistance to Magicka, which combined with the weakness from the Apprentice means you net out neutral and actually start with zero. You're not weak to it, you're not resistant to it, you just boom, have a 200% higher magic pool. So that's honestly my favorite use of the Apprentice. Moving on to the third option, we have the Atronach. And this one is a bit interesting because it kind of changes the game flow. I really don't recommend this for beginners at all because you're really going to have to focus on preparation before adventures or key dungeons or quests. And I'll explain why here in a second. So if we look at the abilities here, we have Spell Absorption 50 points, Fortify Maximum Magicka 2x, so 200%, and Stunted Magicka. So, Stunted Magicka, that's really what sets this apart. And that means that you will not regain your Magicka when resting. So you go back to the Mage's Guild or the Thieves' Guild or your house or something, you take a sleep at the end of a long quest, your Magicka Pool is not going to refill. The only way that you can refill your Magicka Pool is via potions, is via spell absorption, so absorbing other people's spells, converting it back into your Magicka uh, shrines. Um, you're really limited on how you can get your Magicka back after using it, which is why I really don't recommend this for beginners. But if you're an experienced player, you know how to play around this. The Atronach is an excellent choice because you're just essentially never going to have to worry about your Magicka pool again. So that being said, sum it up. The Mage, safest option, straight down the middle. The Apprentice, great on Bretons, great on High Elves if you don't really care about your health. And then the Atronach, Changes the flow of the game a lot, not recommended for beginners, but of course fit your fancy. I'm going to take the apprentice here for the sake of this video. So boom, there we have it. Chris Angel, the Breton Mind Freaker. Uh, here's a peep at the stats and let's get going. So as is tradition, after cleaning out that room in the excise office and escaping, you know, the pillar of, of masculine aura that is Celis Gravius, we've got to sell some of our items here just to get a little bit of gold. I'm going to be spending this in the Balmora Mages Guild, and we'll explain why uh, in just a moment here. 336? Actually, not too bad. You know, 336 gold, not too bad for a couple seconds of work here. All right, so we pawned all our gear off on Arle. Uh, that, that poor guy 
God, he's gonna have so many freaking platters. He probably can. He probably has like a little pillow for it in the back of his thing, but it's just freaking platters just stacked up on each other like a like a deck of cards or something. What are you doing, Arlay? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but anyways, now we're gonna go to the Samaris ancestral tomb, and if if you're familiar with Marwin, you probably know what we're going after first. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, I totally forgot he was a thing. Hello. <laughs> um, actually, Iron Sparks are probably won't be a bad thing to have on us uh, in case I run out. Dude, I always forget about Tariel. Let's grab his $50 journal. He must be an excellent freaking writer. Or maybe maybe he's just got like a cult of super fans. Because I, I, I don't think anybody would pay $50 for my journal. Are you kidding me? Oh. So over here, we got a lot of experienced crabs. You know, may actually not be a bad idea to start getting a little bit of XP going. As you can see, Firebite, like, forecasts. We're, we're, still, we're still kicking and screaming with the Magicka. More than enough. More than enough. God, I'm so used to playing speedrun characters that I feel like I am crawling right now. Where is the steed when you need it? All right, so here we are at Samaris. Let me grab a quick save in case anything goes crazy. Uh, but should be a pretty straightforward run. Who's over here? What do we have over here? <gasps> you got a ghost. You can't scare Chris Angel. <laughs> that guy's seen some shit, I'm sure. Oh, ooh, here we go. Bone Walker. Dodge. First real enemy of the run. Fire bites putting in work, though. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Can't keep a good mage down. Oh, I forgot it was trapped. Uh -huh. Oh, no. <laughs> Shit. I forgot it was trapped. I got too excited. All right, all right, all right. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call streamer brain. Recording or streaming and doing anything lowers your IQ by about 700 points. It actually makes you dumber than you ever thought possible. All right, take two. Let's let's uh, let's not die to the trap first, please. That'd be great. Wonderful. Okay. Just gonna... Oh, no! You bastard! In my moment of weakness, I have no health. Okay, hold on. Let's pop a heal. Let's use our shield here. Look at that. Perks of being a Breton. Die, Fetcher. All right, there we go. What would you look at that? Uh, hey, now we got some nice freaking gold. That actually that actually helps out a lot. That's going to make uh, the rest of this a lot easier. All right, get the ring on. I'll explain it in a second. Cast heal. Okay, look at that. That wasn't even too bad. So, pro tip. If you get stuck on a trap like that, they'll do different damage uh, sometimes. So... Quick save right before you open it, and then sometimes it'll do a million damage, sometimes it'll do like five, and you can actually just kind of cheese it and luck out. But anyways, we got the item we came for, which is the Mentor's Ring, which is just a straight-up fortify attribute, 10 points to intelligence, 10 points to willpower. Freaking great way to start off. Not too bad. Now, on to the second uh, item that's going to let us be freaking OP. Let's head on back to Sedanine, and then we'll move over to Balmora. Back to Sedanine, where the census and excise is. Yeah! Now that I'm here, let's grab a rest. Our magic is kind of low, and I'm going to join the Mages Guild and actually buy some uh, some quick spells and stuff. So now we're going to sell our Dark Brotherhood armor. Look at that. Just came in at the right time. Look at that. All right, so we've dumped off all our loot. Let's come over here. All right, so now that we have a little gold jingle jangling in the pocket, let's uh, come over here and grab an open mm -hmm. spell. And then let's spin around. Oh, where'd she go? There she is. And then we will spell make a 100 level unlock spell. And as you can see, even at the low level of one, Spell chance, 38. So there we go. We can now get into any door in the game. Look at that. 
Additionally, while I'm traveling around, I'm gonna come to Aldrun. Whoa, hey there, Editor Coffee uh, coming from the future. And I just wanted to call out, you're also gonna need a levitation spell before you leave Balmor. So yeah, be, be sure to grab that um, before you head out because I totally forgot to mention that when I originally recorded this video. So here it is. And then I'm going to grab telekinesis because this is actually gonna let us trigger traps from far away. Fun fact to Marwyn that you may not have known, if you're out of arms reach of a trap pretty much, it won't hit you. The only exception being a door that leads you into another area. But all your chests, all your lock boxes, everything, you can trigger them, trip them, just by using telekinesis and being in a different spot. Outlander. So now I'm gonna go back to Belmora and I'm gonna catch a Silt Strider over to Vivek. And then from Vivek, I'm gonna take the boat My to Ebonheart. Safe. Now that we're in Ebonheart, we're gonna head over here to the right, walk out that gate, and just ignore all these, you know, beautiful people in town. Um, I must say, I do love the way that that armor has always looked. What is it, Nordic steel? That looks so sick with the ram horns and stuff. People need to use ram horns more on the armor. I think it looks really freaking cool. Elden Ring did a good job, though. Good job, Elden Ring. So now that we left the gate, we're going to come over here, take a left, and then head all the way down to this little peninsula that kind of sticks out from the castle over here in Ebonheart. As there is a secret entrance just beneath the water. So now that we're in the underground caves, just need to make our way inside. Dispatch some of these rats. Ah! Okay, there we go. After killing the rats, you'll come to this first cross in the road. And then hidden over here on the left is actually a glass jink blade paralyzed for 10 seconds on touch. I love to pick this up in the early game when I'm playing a mage as it's just a super easy way to disengage from combat. If anyone's up in your face, hit them with a couple of these, a couple of those, boom. You can just run away, you're good to go. Paralyze really is such an underrated skill, uh, especially for a mage. You can kite so effectively with it. If you're a conjurer of any kind, hitting a paralyze on someone, backing away, letting your minions take uh, aggro and just, you know, absolutely mob the person. Incredible technique, I must say. Mwah. So we're off to a pretty good start here. We have a character sorted out, got the mentor's ring buffing our int and willpower, and we have a good paralyzed weapon so that we can kite back and forth in combat. Now we're gonna worry about money and get some additional gear that we wouldn't have access to if we weren't a mage. And when I'm talking about additional gear and money, I mean a lot, a lot of potential money. So first to do this, we're gonna travel to Sadrith Mora. And then from Sadrith Mora, we're going to have to head to the wonderful, wonderful island of Telfir, which you probably can't really see it well, but it is down here. There's no good way to get there. You're gonna have to use a levitation spell or water walking or just swim and deal with all the slaughter fish. It's not too bad of a, of a journey, um, but I'm just gonna cut there in this video because it takes a freaking minute to get there and no one wants to see that. Hey, whoa, would you look at that? We made it. <laughs> ah, the magic of editing. It really is wonderful, isn't it? Now that we're at Telfir, we're gonna use those spells that I bought back in Balmora. And why are we gonna do this? Well, because Mr. Divyeth Fear has some incredible loot. First things first, come up here to the tower. Boom. Then we need to get up yonder. So you need to levitate up there. You need to have a levitation spell. And then once we're up here, we need to use the strategy that I mentioned before, which is using our 100 lock spell and a combination of telekinesis to dodge traps. So the first thing we're gonna want to do, and make sure, yep, my magic is okay, is come over here, his closet, and let's try it. Boom, look at that, first try. Friendly reminder, level one here. First try. So we unlocked it. Let's put on our telekinesis. We cast a 100 lock and fell telekinesis. What is wrong with you, Marwind? Okay, we got our telekinesis on. Let's just step out of the room a little bit. Boom, open it. Incredible. And then there we go, there you have it. 
Curus of the Savior's Hide, 150,000 gold with a resist magicka of 60%. So if we put this on a Breton, we have 110% resist magicka. Uh, if we put it on a High Elf, we'll basically get rid of their weakness entirely um, and go up to 10% resist magicka. So, pretty, pretty awesome set of light armor for a mage. I know I took on armor at the beginning on this run, so if this was me actually playing through this character, I'd probably just sell this item and grab something different. But you get the idea. If you're a light armor mage, this is this is something to get. Now another incredible item here. Let's get our lock splitter back on. Oh, don't I have enough magicka. Okay, well, let's hop down the well here. And actually we can sleep in Mr. Diviot's bed. <laughs> He's He's a very, he's a very generous host, I must say. But once we slept in the bed, got our magicka back, we need to just come up here, get our spells back on, and try again. There we go. go. Success. Get telekinesis. Let's, uh, let's get over here. Boom. Unlocked. Trapped. And there you have it, Scourge, 80,000 gold mace. Now, I wouldn't really plan to use this on a mage unless you're going blunt weapon, trying to use the Mace and Malak Ball later on, but the active ability to summon Scamps and Dremora for free really overpowered early, especially when paired in with the Jink Blade. And then, you know, just to polish it off, let's see, let's see what's in the ornate lockbox too. I mean, make, make me, you know, make me. <laughs> there we go, telekinesis. It's always crazy to me, you fail telekinesis and succeed, you know, the absolutely insane lock splitting spell at level one, but you fail the little telekinesis trick, the little party trick, no one cares about. There you go, see the bomb go off, and there you have it, Daedric Sanctuary Amulet, did I have am Amulet? Amulet, the Daedric Sanctuary. Amulet. And another 3,000 gold to the pockets. So. Thank you, Mr. Fear. It was a pleasure doing business with you. All right, so there you have it. The essential mage start. You have all the money in the world now that you could want. Your ints, high. Your willpower's ridiculous. And you have a Dremor and Scamp Companion that you can summon over and over again to fight with you. You have an ability to kite, and you can get through any door, lock, or chest that this game can throw at you. The only thing to do next, get a crazy levitation spell, fly through the air with the greatest of ease, and then of course, maybe get some extra conjuration spells or some massive area of effect fire spells and just go crazy. But the base is set. This is how I always create my Marwin mages. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe down there and I will catch you on the next one.